Hello beautiful people and welcome back to my channel. Um, for today's video, I'm gonna first of all try and not say um too much. Uh, here we go. I'm gonna first of all try and not say um too much. Today's video is essentially, you know, how you how to become a blogger in 2024 or at least how to start a blog. I wanted to give you tips and walk through a little bit of my journey to being a blogger, why I did it, and just some things to keep in mind if you are planning on embarking on the same journey. First and foremost, before we get any further in this video, please subscribe, like, engage in the comments, leave me a little something if something that I say resonates or strikes something or strikes a thought or provokes some sort of thought, but just subscribe because I want you to stick around and to be here and you know, because we're having a good time here. This is yet another week that we have a YouTube video. So the momentum is there. We're keeping it, we're going along, we're trudging along. And if you are watching this video and you have absolutely no interest in being a blogger and you're watching this just because I'm posting it, like, oh my gosh, thank you. And if you are new to my channel and you've come across this video because you are interested in the topic, here we talk about a lot of different things. But yeah, talking about content creation, talking about just daily life and vlogs, we talk about all the things. I always like to say like, I am talking about life or the content that I share is a reflection of life as I am experiencing it. So I am a black woman, so sometimes the things that I talk about are gonna pertain to that. I'm a woman who is in my 20s, so the things that I talk about are gonna pertain to that. I'm a woman who has been a teacher, who has been a law student, who has been a lawyer for a little bit. And so we're gonna talk about that sometimes. I'm someone who has pivoted careers. We're gonna talk about that sometimes. There are just so many things that we can talk about that just deal with life, navigating life in your 20s, early, mid, now late for me, late 20s. So I hope you stick around for the ride and I do hope you subscribe to my channel. reiterate the importance or the relevance of blogging in 2024. I was at a dinner, a brand dinner, a couple of weeks ago and I overheard or like the topic of blogging came up in conversation and I overheard someone being like, wow, like if someone says they have a blog, I'm just like, whoa, like that's, you still have that? That's still a thing? And in my mind I was like, dang, like I still got a blog or I, just, I still got that. But um, I, so I really quickly just want to touch base on why, if you are thinking about becoming a content creator, why having a blog might be something that is worth thinking about. I know a lot of times we see Instagram and TikTok and even YouTube as the place to grow and build your brand as a creator. So first and foremost, and I'll talk about even, this kind of seeps into why I did it. I wanted to start a blog because I wanted something of my own. I started the blog on June 1st of 2018. If you don't know, it is called anygivensunday.com, just like my handle, consistent across all platforms. And I specifically, like I had started creating content or I had fallen into creating content consistently on Instagram. And I actively, after a year of doing that, wanted to officially launch what would I, what I would consider my journey as a content creator. I wanted to make it clear to the world, like, this is not just a regular page, this is the page of a content creator. And besides the fact that I thought like blog, like saying that you're a blogger has some sort of legitimacy in a way that just like saying that you post on Instagram didn't, um, I wanted something that was my own. I had taken or I was very much so influenced and inspired by um, Lala Adeshina, I believe I'm saying that right. But this content creator, I will put her stuff right here on the screen, had created a course called The Blogger Etiquette and she was consistently sharing so many resources and so much knowledge about having a blog. I actually bought some of her resources around in 2018 and then I wanna say a couple of years later, I actually took the course. And with that, like it became very clear that YouTube could fall apart or YouTube was owned by someone else, Instagram is owned by someone else, and now TikTok is owned by someone else, but a blog is genuinely your own. Uh, and a lot of times when apps, fail or they shut down or you no longer like they're they're down when instagram is down or tiktok is down or something like that people always like bring this conversation back because it's like hey if all of these things fall apart are you starting from scratch or is there some place that your audience can find you um and having your own blog is an easy way for your audience to still be able to reach you some way some shape some form so if it's not clear if anything happens if all of these apps and platforms fail just know that you will always be able to find me sharing something on anygivensunday.com 
Another reason that I can explain the uh, that I to explain the relevance of blogs in 2024, a blog really is just a website. You have your own website. Uh, and when you have your own website, that means you have your own domain. And when you have your own domain, you can create your own email address with that domain. So for me, I thought it was really, it kind of gave like a professional feeling when I had uh, an email in my bio and it would say at any given Sunday.com instead of at G any given Sunday at gmail.com. It's something that made me feel like I was like running a business. And I remember just being really, really excited when I had like an at any given Sunday.com. Going back to my point that a blog is really just a website, like you don't have to really consider, you don't have to share like blog posts, right? Like I think we do this often where we put blogging into some box where we're thinking about like Tumblr or things like that. But to be a blogger is to be a writer, right? So if I wanted to, sometimes I could really call myself a writer and we'll get into that a little bit later when I think of when we talk about like what are the types of things that you could use a blog to share. Uh, but being a blogger is being a writer. So you can essentially like you, if you're consistently putting out posts, if you're consistently reviewing products, like you can, that, that's being a beauty reviewer, right? Like if you're consistently sharing blog posts, those are really articles and essays that is a writer. Um, so to the extent that you like writing and to the extent that writing is still a necessity and reading is still important. Um, I think blogs in that way are relevant. Again, going back to my point that a blog is a website and I'm, potentially thinking about ways that I should revamp my blog since the since I launched it in 2018 I have not done anything to change my website but I think I'm moving into this space where I think there are more things that I want reflected on my site um and I think like I've kind of grown a lot since then and my my website should reflect that but to the extent that you are doing speaking engagements to the extent that you are selling products or want to sell products in the future to the extent that you have a link tree bet you didn't think about it why are you giving views to link tree if you can create a page on your website and just have links to all of the things that uh that that you want people directed to so it really just gives you a lot of agency over how you want to direct traffic as it comes to your personal brand um and so in that way i would say blogs are very still they're very much so still useful and so relevant in 2024 not just for writing traditional blog posts but for just having a central place where people can find you for establishing your brand off of social media and having another way another 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 place that further like enhances or that further communicates what your brand is um i feel like i just mentioned a little bit of this but to the extent that you have speaking engagements your blog is a place where you can list out your resume or list out brands that you've worked with. Um, not list out your resume in that way. I mean like list out places that you've spoken before, list out speaking engagements that you've had, list out brands that you've worked with, um, create a form for people to get in contact with you, have uh, links to videos that you viewed, um, things that you, uh, or videos that you've created. Like you can create, as long as you have a brand, having a website is going to be relevant and having a blog is like, a subsection of having a website in a way. Well, really that was the case for why blogs are relevant to you as a creator in 2024. But now let's talk a little bit about why blogs in 2024 are still relevant for consumers. When you have a question and you want to do some research, where are you likely going to go to get the answer to that question or to get the results of that research? Okay. In this day and age, maybe you'll go to TikTok first. You'll probably actually go to TikTok first, but after that, you're probably gonna go to Google. Um, and I do this and I go to Google for research, particularly when it comes to travel and sometimes even when it comes to certain products that I do not see enough reviews of on TikTok. And when I go searching for reviews of products, typically what's going to pop up are reviews from beauty brands and articles. But that is, that is also a very prime opportunity for you to insert yourself as an authority figure um, when it comes to reviewing products. I know I'm leaning back a little bit into explaining it from the creator side because that's my natural inclination. But from a consumer side, like people, wh whenever you Google something, Google is a search engine, right? So it's not like going to show you a bunch of Google ads, right? Like it's going to show you what people have shared on that topic 
So as long as people are Googling things, as long as people are still researching certain topics, the information that you provide in a blog post will always be relevant to a consumer. Blogs will always be relevant to consumers in the way that articles in, in journals are, in the way that are uh, just j magazine reviews and articles are, in the way that all of those things are going to be relevant as long as people are still using Google to conduct research. So now I want to talk a little bit about my own journey. I know I referenced it just a little bit before, but I want to just dive deeper into my journey and how I did it. Uh, keep in mind, I started a blog in 2018. And the reason that I started it was because again, I decided that I wanted to be a legitimate, legitimate content creator. And a part of that was just establishing starting a blog established my legitimacy, right? Like, it kind of was like the stamp, like this is a person that takes their craft seriously. Um, and for me, I didn't really, I'm not going to lie. It wasn't like a big production for me. I did a lot of research. Uh, I think I had heard I was between two options, WordPress and Squarespace. At the time, I believe Squarespace was considered the platform that was better if you were like a digital content creator so if you were sharing you were a photographer sharing photos or you were you know just in a space that was a lot more visual whereas wordpress might have been a better option for people who were sharing a lot of writing i also at the time when i had done my research heard that wordpress was a little bit more user friendly and I wanted something that was very easy and straightforward. I was not hiring someone to build this website for me. It was going to be my own. And so for that reason, I had to have something that was user friendly. I don't know how much that that has changed. So I can't speak to or give you a review of Squarespace, but I know that WordPress has been fine for me as somebody who had no clue what I was doing and someone who moves like with the speed of light to start this blog. I basically just like went for it. I was like, all right, bet I Bluehost. So WordPress is the platform that will help you, um, that will basically like, it's the, it's the platform through which you compose your site. Bluehost is the hosting platform that I use to get my domain. So you have to like buy your territory on the internet. You basically have to buy your website. And I did that through Bluehost and Bluehost had a partnership with WordPress whereby I bought my domain through Bluehost and was immediately like kind of like directed to or through WordPress to actually build my site. Um, and so one, I would say you need to research how you are going to get your domain. I got my domain through Bluehost and honestly, I would say I haven't really had any major issues, uh, but I'm sure there are other platforms out there through which you can buy your domain. Once you've gotten your domain and you've gotten your little space of the internet and you've paid for it, because usually that is going to come at a cost, uh, you need to figure out what platform, what, what website you want to use to actually put your information out there. And then after picking the platform, um, you probably like if you're doing something like I did, which did not involve any coding at all, like the coders did that already. All I had to do was choose a certain template. The codes were already made. Um, and choose the theme for my website. So WordPress has a bunch of different themes that again, you will also have to buy. So I bought a theme and applied it to my site and that pretty much gave me the structure that I have for my blog today. I will say, depending on the theme, uh, you don't really have that much leeway again, like you can change certain colors, you can change maybe the font, but the structure, the theme pretty much will determine the structure of the uh, website for you. So if you want certain things to, to look different, you're probably not gonna be able to do that because that would involve changing the code. Um, and like that probably means you need to find a new theme altogether. Obviously, of course, you have the option of going through and ha hiring someone to do your website, but I enjoyed the process of doing it. And I also think it's good to be able to, as you are building your brand and as you are building certain things, like. Everything that you hire someone to do should be something that you can do yourself, should be something that you are familiar with yourself. Um, it doesn't mean you have to do it. And it doesn't mean you have to do it always and forever. Like I know that I can run a website and I can create a website or build a website. So in the year 2024, I don't need to do it myself again. I can definitely hire someone and should hire someone. But I think when you are starting out, one, 
to cut costs and to save financial resources but two i just generally think like it is a good pro tip that whenever you are building something you should at least be familiar or get experience in how to do it um because like i don't know it's your it's take onus take ownership of the thing that you are creating on a less technical level um you're gonna have to decide what you're posting you're gonna have to decide how often you're posting you're gonna have to decide how you're telling people that you've posted um and you're also gonna have to think through things like seo i highly recommend you looking into a bunch of other resources and a bunch of other just like youtube videos because i don't want to get too deep into the rabbit hole of seo but essentially seo to give you just a quick walkthrough is a it stands for search engine optimization so remember when we talked about google and we spoke about how when you do research like there are going to be certain results that come up after your google search search engine optimization helps there it's a list of things that you can do to ensure or to improve the chances that your post or your website will appear higher up in the search so um like paying attention to what comes up when you google uh best places to honeymoon in 2024 the, the the things that appear first have either bought that space so either with sponsored being there or they have done something to optimize the ability for that post to show up as early as it does obviously the earlier a post shows up the more views it is going to get the more traffic they're going to get to their website and if they get more traffic to the website and they have ads on the page or anything like that it's going to correspond to money um speaking of which as an aside i don't really have too many ads on my site and i did not really monetize my blog i monetized my platform on uh social media but and i've done a couple of sponsored blog posts but i think a very common way that people monetize their blogs are through advertisements i don't have too much experience in that area but if that's something that you're considering i would look into it but i don't know sometimes i just like i hate when i go on certain blogs and there's just advertisement everywhere and i'm just like uh like but that's how people like that's how people are able to make money i didn't say this before but it just came to me now another opportunity or reason that a blog could be is still very relevant is the area of recipes um cooking blogs are still very much alive and well and if you are someone who's on tiktok like or instagram or and, and you're creating reels with recipes like th because they're so wordy and because they're so detailed and because there's so many different notes that you want to include like you oftentimes need unless it's a very simple recipe if it's not a simple recipe you need a place to direct people you need a place to put the put to put that full recipe um so especially if you're thinking about cooking like every time i see a, a nice cooking video i'm just like there better be a, a, a website and if they don't have a website that that like i can see the full thing and see the full breakdown and see all of the notes like i'm a little bit annoyed um so there's that oh another reason that blogging is still uh helpful or relevant pinterest 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 the way pinterest works is that you are able to pin things they have to come from somewhere um and pinterest really does work best when you are pinning things from websites from blogs like people are getting inspiration from things that like already exist on the internet like you're not really i'm not like too familiar with pinterest but like you're not creating new pictures on pinterest you are literally it's like a digital scrapbook you are taking things from other websites and you are pinning them onto pinterest for other people to see um and so that's if you like pinterest and blogging go hand in hand honestly so that's just me going back to the original point that I made in the beginning about like with my list of all of the reasons why blogging is still relevant. I know we got a little sidetracked, but as they come to me, I want to get them off. Going back to my journey, I kind of already had a built in day of the week where I was going to share and I decided to go with once a month. I mean, once a week, every Sunday, I would have a new blog post to the extent that I could do more than that. I did. Um, but I would aim to not do less than one blog post a week on a Sunday. And that was just because of my brand. That was because of the brand that I had built because it involves Sundays and involves certain names. Whatever you do, I would say you should figure out a cadence and figure out a cadence at which you can be consistent with. If it's every other week, go for the every other week. But it, it has to be something that people can know when to expect it from you. going back to my point on seo just a couple of tips uh or just how i can illuminate i think it's this more this more so falls into the tip category to get your posts to um 
appear higher in the search search results. One, the I I know how the criteria for SEO is built in, I want to say, with WordPress. It's called Yoast SEO. There's a baseline level and there's an extra level that you can pay for. I don't do the payment part. I just do the baseline level. And it'll give you a certain list of criteria that will help you improve your odds of appearing higher in a search. So things like linking to other websites, things like linking to different parts of your website. So usually that's why people link to previous blog posts or will link to previous recipes. It's because of that. It's things like the number of words you use. So oftentimes when you see those like, you know, cooking blogs and you're like, girl, get to the point. Like why just take me to the recipe? It's because all of that extra text is to help with search engine optimization. It's the keyword that you choose and the number of times that you use the keyword. So if the keyword that you chose is chocolate chip cookies, like your SEO will, will be better if you use chocolate chip cookies a certain number of times based on the total number of words that you have. So again, going back to those cooking blogs, whenever they say like, oh, like, you know, if you ever notice that certain words are repeated often or the words that are in the title are repeated often, it's because they're trying to boost SEO so that they appear higher up in the Google search results. Um, your title, your keywords, your, um, the pictures that you use, having alt text and naming the pictures after your keywords, all of those things are going to factor in to whether or not you have truly optimized your search engines. A little tip or a little side conversation that I think is worth having is the keyword that you use and the level of specificity that you use can make or break how high up you appear in a search. Um, if you use a search, like if your keyword is something like uh, Bali vacation, right? That's vague, right? And you might be able to optimize Bali vacation for your own website, like on your own, like you might be able to get all the green check marks that like, you know, are like how you optimize or how you get in the green light for SEO. But chances are like, there are thousands of other people who have used that keyword that you are competing against. So when you use certain keywords and when you use vague keywords, like you run the risk of not even having a chance of even appearing in a Google search before page like 25, or I'm just using that as an example. The more specific you get, the higher your chances are of appearing higher up in that search. But that also comes at, that comes at the expense of niching down. It's not really the expense, but that happens as you get more specific, you might move up in SEO ranking, but you might move down in the sense that many people may not be searching for it, right? Like, so putting chocolate chip cookie versus might like, you know, you're not getting any, you, you, the odds that you're just there on the first page are very slim, but putting the best brown butter chocolate chip cookies in under 24 hours that, you know, you might, you might be up in the rankings for Google, but how many people are going to literally Google the best brown butter chocolate chip cookies in 24 hours, right? So maybe that's a term that only 100 people are searching for versus chocolate chip cookie, millions of people might be searching for that, but like for that same reason, you're also competing with a whole bunch of people. So I would say, and I don't think I'm doing a great job of explaining it, but you kind of have to find that sweet spot um, so an example of this, I'll give, I'll go back to the Bali vacation, Bali vacation, you know, that might be a, a, a keyword that has thousands of hits that has a lot of hits. So maybe I want to niche down and create a keyword that's solo trip to Bali, or if I even want to niche down even more solo trip to Bali, black woman. Um, and yes, I've maybe closed off or I've significantly reduced the number of people who might be searching for that keyword, but there are definitely going to be people who are searching. Um, and I might, because I've niched down, appear higher up on that search. Um, but I know I've definitely found it relevant to hear about people's solo travel experiences. So it's like getting specific in that way can be helpful getting specific in the sense that I named now black women. So now for black women who are interested and want to specifically hear about my experience as a black woman on a solo trip to Bali, that's a very, like, that's a, that's a much more niche than just saying Bali vacation. But because I got that specific, and if I use my SEO correctly, I might now get bumped up and I might get 
like more of those viewers, even though there might be less viewers as a whole. I don't think I did the best job at explaining all of this, but so I would highly encourage you to still like do your own research as to SEO, but a huge part of running your own website and running your own like blog where you're creating articles and you're sharing things, that is a huge opportunity um, to get your, your content in front of people. Another example that I'll give is set like the opportunities that are available when it comes to blogging is Hanifa Home just came out with a new candle. Right off the bat, I want to know, I want to see if there are reviews. I look up, you know, Hanifa Home or Hanifa Candle, and I see that there are no, I mean, like the there are reviews, but there are from they're from beauty companies. Um, they're from beauty writers and editors. That is a very crystal clear opportunity for someone to write a blog post reviewing the Hanifa candle, chances are, especially because it's early days, you might be able to appear like higher up in the search because there just aren't that many people who have created content with those keywords yet. Um, and I think a lot of people would actually be interested in hearing about this candle um, and hearing and having that information in front of them. And of course, the thing that I did not mention in all of this as to why blogs are important is because they are evergreen. So like someone will always be able to Google and if your article, like 10 years from now, your article might still be getting you hits because it is like right there at the top of the Google search versus like if I review Hanifa Candle on TikTok, after two days, that video might be hard to find unless I pin it versus a blog that like everything almost like inevitably is forever pinned to the internet. Um, and so for that, like you, you will always be able to do a Google search for Hanifa Candle or like if I wrote an article, you could always Google Hanifa Candle any given Sunday and it'll take you right there. You could always Google any given Sunday graduation dress and it'll take you to my graduation dress article. And I can just easily send people links to stuff instead of being like, oh, let me scroll all the way back and find, you know, what I actually posted at that moment in time. Things to keep in mind in 2024. So I guess like this would be the little advice per portion because I started my blog in 2018 and I do think times have changed just a little bit. Um, I would say, I don't think you can do a standalone blog anymore. I think a blog has to be in conjunction with social media. It has to be to support. So if you're doing a series on social media, like use the blog as backup so that you have a place to direct people so that you have a blog post where everything is linked so that you have all of those things. I don't think brands are monetized or like partnering with people for blogs as much anymore. So I would say keep that in mind as well, that it's not really going to be as lucrative as like brand deals are, but I think it is good practice in running a, like running your own business. Overall, I would just say things to keep in mind, like. It takes work still. I would say it still takes the same amount of work. Um, random pro tips, I mentioned this, but yeah, if you have a website, like instead of directing traffic to Linktree, create a page on your website where you have all of the things that you would want it linked in your Linktree and just direct people there. So my YouTube channel, my like to know it, my whatever, you can make a page on your site and add all of those buttons and link to all of those things um, such that you are not throwing views or throwing traffic away to third party sites that would do that because you can do it yourself. I think we've come to the end of this video. I feel like I was rambling all over the place. I promise you I had a structure and I promise you I just, but I also wanted to kind of be like free form, free flowing a conversation. So I hope you enjoyed this video and let me know if you're, you know, what you're thinking about starting with your blog or if you're, if you're thinking about doing that still, I'd love to hear, love to get a little bit of, you know, get some dialogue going and just like if to the extent that I can help you as you think through some of the things that you might want to do for starting a website in 2024. Thank you so much again for watching. Be sure to subscribe on your way out if you haven't already, but I will see you guys next time. Bye.